you've probably already seen a bunch of videos talking about the ROG Ally and its performance and looking at it from the outside. In this video, I'm gonna be taking a look at the inside to see how repairable this device is. It's always nice to have a device that performs well and looks good, but if you can't fix it or if it's difficult to fix, that makes it a lot less fun to use. Overall, it feels pretty sturdy. It's got nice button feel. The outside looks good. We gotta see what it looks like on the inside and if it looks very repairable. So it looks like we've got six Phillips screws holding this back case on. Let's get those out and see if there's anything connected to the back case. I'm gonna start out with a pH zero to remove these screws. That is a long screw. Let's see if all the screws are the same. Uh, uh, that's a captive screw, I guess. Interesting. Another long screw. Oh, it's already starting to pry apart right there. So since it's already kind of starting there, I'm just gonna come along here. There we go. Just got some clips on there. That actually comes apart pretty easy so far. Let's go ahead and try not to break it while I'm doing the disassembly. That seems like that would be good. Okay, just some clips and all right, that's actually easy enough. And we do have this one captive screw here. That's interesting. We've got the RT and LT button assemblies. There's actually metal involved in this. That's impressive. We've got metal hinges. I love seeing that. So you can bet these are gonna be nice and strong long-term. I think maybe the only thing they might have problems with is the where the plastic button connects to the metal. But other than that, that feels really nice. Do not disassemble. Yeah, we're gonna be disassembling it. So I'm gonna peel this foil off just to see what's underneath. And honestly, I already know what's underneath because I already did this once, but I forgot to press record. <laughs> so I'm doing it again because there is some info underneath here and I figured if anyone ever needs it, then I will peel this up so we can see it. So we've got a 2,515 milliamp hour battery at 17.8 volts. We've got a bunch of other numbers down in here. I think this is probably the only number we, you would need if you were going to replace it, but there is some other numbers down here that might also be helpful. Now we can just fold this back down and they'll never even know we did it. That's a joke, by the way. There, look at that. I bet I could just send this right in for warranty repair and they wouldn't even know. I'd just be like, oh, I don't know, it came like that. Sounds like a you problem. And we've got four screws to remove the battery. And of course, warranty stickers that I've already removed once. Come on, Asus. Got a warranty sticker here, a warranty sticker down here. Seriously, just let people fix stuff. Okay, and then the battery comes out just like that. All right, and now we have these two boards here and then the larger board down here. So I'm gonna start by removing these two. And then it looks like probably the fans come off and we may need to install the perfect amount of thermal paste because I'm sure Asus didn't do it correctly. But let's get these boards off first. It would be handy if these boards used the same length and type of screw. Oh, come on. I have to look for that in a minute. It'd be nice if they used the same type of screw so we don't have to keep them in order or anything, but I'll have to see once I get them all off here. Okay, good so far. Gotta remove this little ribbon cable. And what looks like probably the speaker connector. Don't pull on the wires, kids. Use these amazing needle nose pliers instead. Come on. There we go. Okay, and now does this just... Kinda wants to lift off, but... Oh, yeah, it does, okay. Okay, I actually really like this. This has the analog stick attached to it and then looks like a little vibrating motor here. So the nice thing about this is if your analog stick goes bad and you don't know how to replace it, you can just replace this board. And actually, there's two screws holding this on. Okay, so theoretically, we can just remove probably the thumb stick cap first, then this screw and the other one, and then 
that would be a replaceable and easily re easily replaceable analog stick. That would be awesome. Does this just that just pulls up and it, wow. Okay. Hey, I'm all about that. That's amazing. So this hopefully at some point the ally will have replaceable thumb sticks, analog sticks that you can just plug right in there. That would be amazing. I love the design of the analog stick so far, and this is actually turning out to be quite a repairable little device so far. Now also, if your analog stick on this thing is just dirty, all you have to do is remove this board, remove the thumbstick cap, and then you can just spray some BW100 right down in there, and that will clean it out for you. If it's totally destroyed inside that won't you know no product will will fix that you'll just have to replace it but if it's just dirty bw100 works great for that and this is this video is not sponsored by them it's just a product i really like okay so i'm impressed with that let's move on take a look at this side and then we'll remove the fans and the heat sink i'm just pulling on the white connector not on the black part if you pull on the black part you're going to pull it off the board then you're going to need to learn how to solder to fix it. So this is a pretty big connector here. I need to remove this tape far enough that it's not taped on. And we can just take some pliers and pliers, take some tweezers and just pull that out. There we go. Oh, I still am missing the screw over here. Where did that, oh, it's right down there. Okay. Let's see if I can get this thing out of here. Yes, got it. And all the screws for this are all the same. Let's see if that's true of this one. That makes it so much easier. It's just so much less stressful and you don't have to worry about keeping track of every little screw and you know, the size of the screw and where it goes. Like taking apart iPhones can be a nightmare if you're not used to it just because you got to remember where each screw goes. And if you get it wrong, you could just totally destroy your phone. And now this one should pop up. Yep, there we go. Do we have the same? Yep, same configuration. So we've got the thumbstick, the analog stick underneath held down by two screws and just a ribbon cable going to a connector. I love that design. Okay, now we've got this screw over here, this screw right here. And it's now loose, at least. I'm trying to decide if I have to remove this black. Yep, I do. So we just got these four screws here. And of course, another warranty sticker. Can we peel it off without breaking it, though? These are like super fragile. They're meant to break if you try and peel it off. But if you're especially talented, you can pull it off without breaking it. That is a joke, by the way, especially because I'm probably going to break this getting it off of my tweezers. <laughs> okay, so now we've got these four screws and I think this whole thing will pop up, maybe. Oh, we got numbers. I already messed up. One, two, three. I'm just going to loosen those a little bit and then remove them all the way go. Okay. Oh, there we go. Let's have a look. How are these? Oh, we got connectors here. Of course. Fan connectors. There's one. Actually, let's take it off from this side. Other one. Just pulling very gently. These needle nose pliers. Pulling back, and there we go. Make sure it's not connected to the adhesive here. There we go. And there we go. Okay. Let's have a look at that thermal paste. Yeah, it definitely doesn't have the perfect amount, so we'll have to fix that for sure. 
Another another nice thing is this heat sink plate right here has captive screws, so we don't have to worry about losing those. That's amazing. Now the main board, we've got a couple connectors on here. We've got to remove the M2 drive. Might as well do that right now. Just one screw for that, obviously. And then, is this attached to the board or the drive? It must be attached to the board. There we go. Okay, that's good. Keeps the drive isolated from the board. That's a smart move. Let's start taking out screws for the main board. And one thing I'm not sure of is how these buttons come out. It looks like they just slide in there, but when I try to slide them out, they don't want to come out. So I'm not totally sure. We might need to remove those before we can get this main board out, but I guess we will find out. I always love it when manufacturers put arrows right in the screws that need to go in. So I know a screw needs to go in here to hold the main board down, but it doesn't need to go in here because there's a little arrow right here. Another cool thing about this is it looks like this must be for the LEDs around the analog sticks. So we've got this little ring right here, probably a little light ring to run those, which I think is really cool. And so far, all of these screws are the same size that hold this board in. So I am loving that. Now we can remove cables, the Wi-Fi cables. We've got B for black, W for white. I also love that, that makes it super easy. I don't even have to take a picture or pay attention to where those cables came from because they're just marked right on the board. Now let's get this connector. This is a speaker connector, it looks like. There we go. We'll take a look at these speakers too. They look like they're in there in a pretty cool way. Okay, we gotta get this connector off. That looks like the screen connector. Okay, and then can we remove these without these shoulder buttons being removed? Oh, we got one more connector right here. There we go. I think that's all. Okay, and there we go. And here is underneath of the main board. I love that they use red solder mask on these. I think the boards on these look really cool. Uh, nothing too crazy going on here. Let's take a look at those shoulder buttons though. Oh wow, that's actually kind of annoying. They're like plastic welded in. I don't like that at all, but what I do like is this right here. So this button, wow, look at this. So this is a beefy button. So they've got this screw that holds this brace in for this button. Let me zoom in, zoom in on that. So let's remove this brace and I'll show you what I mean. I'm assuming it comes off. I don't know for sure. Yep, looks like it does. So there we go. So this button right here, this button takes a lot of abuse on like the Nintendo Switch Joy-Cons, even on the Steam Deck. I've replaced several of these on the Steam Deck already. And part of the problem is these get pushed on really hard and it just pushes them back into the board and it breaks them off of the board. So what Asus has done is they've built in this very strong metal brace back behind that button. So with that installed, when this gets pushed on really hard, that's not going anywhere. It's got this big strong metal brace back here. That's actually very impressive. I'm super impressed with that design. That's exactly what's needed for these. Now on the Steam Deck, they have something similar. They've got a plastic piece right here that is meant to do the same thing. But honestly, I like Asus's solution better. This plastic piece doesn't cover the whole switch and it also is plastic. So, you know, a good strong metal piece is gonna be more secure than this plastic piece. So this is good, but Asus's design is even better in my opinion. Now, as I already said, I don't like that these are plastic welded in because if you break this button, it's gonna be very difficult to repair it. And it's weird that it is plastic welded in there when they could have just made a little groove to slide it into or something, or even just put some screws here. It just, uh, it just makes no sense that they would do that. Let's move on and have a look at this speaker. So the first thing I noticed when I was taking apart this speaker or removing the screws is it's got padding right here. It's got some isolation for vibration, which I think is just super cool. So there's the speaker itself. And having these isolation pads right here 
Just gonna make it so you get really good sound, assuming the speakers are decent, which I haven't heard yet. So now all we have left is the screen. I'm not gonna remove the screen out of this because it's got adhesive on it and I don't wanna mess up the adhesive. If you need to replace the screen on these, it looks like it's just a matter of removing the screen from this plastic case and installing a new one. At some point, maybe I'll do a video on that if that seems to be happening a lot where that's a repair that is needed a lot. But for now, we're gonna leave the screen just as is. Now there's one other thing we need to do before I can reassemble this device. I think you probably know what it is. Yep, say it with me now. The perfect amount of thermal paste. There we go. And now we can finish putting it back together. And with all the guts put back into the Asus ROG Ally, we can put the back cover on, snap it on, and install the screws. But only after we put this black piece back on, I totally didn't just forget to do that. There we go. Now we can put the screws on and the back cover on. I have to say that I'm actually pretty impressed with the ROG Ally as far as repairability and build quality. I would say that it's very comparable to the Steam Deck as far as repairability with one exception. For the Steam Deck, you can get parts right on ifixit.com. With the ROG Ally, you cannot. You never know, maybe in the future ASUS will partner with iFixit to offer OEM parts, but for now we're stuck with finding parts on places like eBay. If you like these types of handheld gaming videos, I'll put a video up on your screen now where I took a Steam Deck that was very broken and I tried to fix it. Come hang out with me over there to see if I could do it. If you want to check out cool new Tronix Fix merch, go to tronixfix.com where you can find shirts like this as well as other merch. Thanks so much for watching today and I hope you have a good one.